Hello and welcome back to Small Talk. We've got a great episode ahead as we chat with a pair from Wittenberg. I'm your host, Katie Ritchie. Each week on this show, we highlight the past and present of Division Three, with both current and former student athletes joining to talk about their experiences, their favorite on-campus spots, the craziest road trip stories, and more. This week, we're chatting with Addie Kane, a member of the women's swim team, alongside a former member of the program and Wittenberg Hall of Honor member, Brenda Shaw. The two talk about the team's strong bond, their fun times on road trips, why they chose Wittenberg, and more. Thanks for joining this week. Now it's time for some small talk. Hi, I am Addie Payne, and I am a current member of the Wittenberg's Women's Swimming and Diving Team. Hi, I'm Brenda Shaw, and I am an alumna of uh, Wittenberg, and I swam from 85 to 89. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Um, you really just snuck in with the NCA women's sports there, Brenda. I think 83 was the first year, so glad we get to claim you. Um, thank you so much for being here today. I'm excited to chat with you guys. Uh, we have a, a former Wittenberg employee in our office. So I hear lots of great things about Wittenberg here. Um, so excited to hear more from you two. The first thing we will start about is on-campus life, and I'll have Addie start this one. Um, when you and your teammates are hanging out or going around campus, on campus, in the local area, what are some of those favorite spots for you guys to get together? Um, whether it's a, a quad, a student center, or like a coffee shop, restaurant, what are some of those favorite spots? And then, Brenda, if you want to follow up and let me know if any of those were the same when you were there. Okay. So currently, our team likes to hang out um, kind of all over the place. I know we'll hang out in Doppelganger sometimes, which is like the game room and the student center on campus. Um, definitely some me and Mario Kart playing happening in there. Um, and then we also like to go watch the men's um, volleyball or any actually any volleyball game or as many sporting events as we can. So usually if like there's a some sort of game happening in the um, HWA after practice, We'll usually just hop right over and watch it if we have time. Um, and so we like to support other sports as well. And just that's something that we all thought was really fun to do. Um, and then if we're having a little bit more of a like calmer hangout, we'll usually um, just go like the guys will usually hang out in like one of the guys' rooms and the girls usually hang out with the girls' rooms And because our team was like was kind of small last year. And so that was manageable to do. And so those were really fun. We would all just – watch a show or just literally just chit chat while we do homework. Yeah, the doppelgangers was not there when I was on campus. We had Rats Keller that was in uh, the lower level of the student center. Um, the student center has completely undergone a renovation though since I was there. So it's so much different. Um, you know, we would, it was interesting because uh, when I was in school, we were uh, on trimesters. And so we had like a six week break from Thanksgiving to the, the beginning of the year. And so we would stay on campus for at least two weeks to train on campus. And then we'd go on a Florida trip to train. And we had the best times hanging out with not just the, the guy swimmers, but the men's basketball team was there. The women's basketball team was there. So all of the winter sports were on campus and they put us into a fern cliff. Um, and it was just great to hang out with all of them. And then um, I get, you know, hanging out at uh, some of the fraternity houses, some of the guys on the swim team, I think there was probably, it was a big house and on Fountain. And I think probably seven or eight guys lived in that house. And so we always hung out at the, at the swimmer house. So now let's think off campus and Brenda, I'll have you start this one. Cause this is always one of the most interesting questions I think to ask how times have changed when it comes to travel. Um, so you probably weren't flying all over the country, you, you know, Division Three. you've got some schools near you, especially in Ohio. Um, but were were you guys in vans that your coaches were driving or maybe you were driving? Um, I've heard that story a couple times this year. Or what was the travel situation for you? Definitely, we traveled in vans everywhere, even on the Florida trip. Um, I ended up driving a lot. Um, and I have a funny story. I got pulled over for speeding in Atlanta as we were driving down to Florida, um, but we'd gotten separated from the other van. 
um, like in Knoxville, Tennessee or something, for some reason. But I knew how, I knew where we were going in Florida. So I just kept going and I got pulled over for speeding. And I it was, I talked my way out of the ticket by basically saying, oh, are you looking for us? Because we got separated from our other van. And, <laughs> and, and the cop just thought I was nuts. But yeah, <laughs> we traveled everywhere. And sometimes in the winter, I mean, oh my gosh, the roads were so bad. Oh, I can imagine. When you look back at that now as a, like a grown adult, are you like, how the heck did they let me drive around a whole college swim team? Or what do you think about that looking back now? No, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, I know it still happens today on occasion where, you know, the they're taking vans again, especially in Ohio, because there's so many schools there. So you don't need a big bus to travel all the time. Yeah, we definitely used vans a lot this past year. Um, my freshman year, we did more charter buses, but this last year, I don't even think we took a charter bus once. I think we took vans everywhere, um, and that was pretty fun. We had um, three coaches, so none of the swimmers had to drive, and I don't think I could imagine any of my teammates driving me. That would scare me to death, um, but it was still really fun because what we did was, I don't know how they did it with um, you, Brenda, but... Um, we would have a theme for like music. So there'd be one person in the front and they had their phone connected to the speaker and they're mm -hmm. like, okay, everybody send me your like hype up song for behind the block. And then they would play it. And then the rest of the band would have to guess whose song it was. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. And well, then... remember we didn't have cell phones. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that was a really big bonding thing with the band because I think a lot of us, um, especially the second year, like my year we weren't really expecting the vans the entire year because we had the charter buses my freshman year and so I think we definitely took it as an opportunity to make it like well we don't have a charter bus but we have ox so we were able to do that which is really fun and my freshman year we ended up taking all there was nine of us going on the trip um total and we all packed into one van oh my <laughs> and so that was definitely uh not something we expected because our flight got canceled for our training trip. So we weren't supposed to take a van. We ended up taking a van. So everybody had to like rearrange their luggage and everything. But that's where the um, music thing kind of started. And so every day, every time we got in the van, it was a different thing. And that was that was the best part about traveling. Yeah. Was just we, the music. Yeah, we even played euchre. That was one of the things we did was play euchre in the in the vans mm -hmm. on trips. Oh, we also play Among Us. We mm -hmm. all got on our phones and it's like a little mobile game you can play on your phone. We all played Among Us and it's like <laughs> fun we're all like sitting right next to each other, like trying to hide the screen. <laughs> and like, and then we're all just screaming at each other in the <laughs> Well, I was even statistician for the baseball team one year. And so I would drive the baseball team or we'd play Euchre. <laughs> I, mean, I think <laughs> we played Euchre. That was the, the thing. Interesting. Well, we know you have good driving skills then, Brenda. I think that's what we're learning today is you can be trusted to drive a van. Um, now, so I know, Brenda, when I was when I was doing my research for this, I see that you um, had many opportunities to compete at the NCAAs, and sometimes those are in pretty fun locations. Do you remember any of those maybe NCAA trips and any fun trips you got to go on there? Oh, yeah, the first two years of um, freshman and sophomore year, we were at Brandon Natatorium in Canton, Ohio. So that Division Three Nationals were at the high school natatorium in, in Canton. And then my junior year, we were at Emory. And then my senior year, we were at Notre Dame, which at that point in time had just built the natatorium there. And it was spectacular. Anything stand out from those trips of maybe outside the pool things you got to do? Um, obviously Canton, not too far. Um, so maybe nothing crazy there, but the other two, um, you know, I remember actually, it was funny the last night of, of nationals, you know, we always went out and celebrated with, it was always, always seemed to be the team from Ohio Northern. Um, we were pretty close with some of the girls on that team. And, um, I remember that we were doing a little celebrating and we had gone out and I'd gone back to the hotel and my mom and dad were there. And I had wanted to give them some dirty laundry to take home for me. And I remember that I just like dumped all of the laundry in front of my parents' door. <laughs> Probably not appropriate. Um, but 
Um, no, we just had great times, and it just always seemed like we had a lot of fun with the girls from Ohio Northern. Awesome. I think that's one of my team's favorite things to do is we always would get uh, food coming home from championships or like um, during midseason, we go to our coach's house because midseasons are at Wooster and she, our current swim coach, Sam, she like her parents live in Wooster. And so um, during midseason, we'd go have dinner at her house and it was always the best times because we would go eat sometimes we take naps and when the distance swimmers aka me are swimming my mile they're like all in um like in her house and they're all watching it and it's just a good time um and so I think at least the team I'm currently on we love like food corned beef hash was like an inside joke this year one of the girls on the team loved corned beef hash and so um our coach's mom made it and like she went crazy. That's funny. Yeah, I know Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Our coach would always have a Christmas party for us before we left um, on our trip. And so we would do that at her house. And yeah, food was always a big deal. And, you know, getting food from Mike and Rosie's was always huge for us. And no, we, food is always a big deal with swimmers, I think. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. That's what I've been learning. Um, Addie, you mentioned training trips. So Florida also, is that the the norm? What are any fun experiences of any of those trips that you remember other than having to pack into a van? Well, we just, my team is definitely, right now we are a bunch of goofballs. We are all extremely like silly little, I don't know. We just, we're literally so silly. And um. I think this was one training trip. I could be completely wrong, but there's a picture of all of us in front of a certified Angus beef like factory. And for some reason that also just became a joke. And we were like, certified Angus beef. What? <laughs> and it was just like, that was a really fun memory. And then um, <laughs> this isn't like a fun memory, but it's like a memory that became funny. We all saw this sushi place my freshman year um that all like everybody wanted to try and so we went and tried it one net day and these two boys on our team got the exact same thing and then the next two days they could not swim because they got like food poisoning or something and so every time we talked about sushi or seafood or anything like that they were like no no I can't and it was just the funniest thing um I think freshman year we got ice cream on the training trip every night because there was a really I don't remember what it's called um but there was a really good ice cream place like right down the pier and we um every night it's like okay who's getting ice cream like let's go let's walk and then we'd all get different flavors and then one time we like saw our coaches there because they were always getting ice cream and it was like whoa and so definitely I feel like the team we have right now we're a bunch of food enthusiasts and just the memories and the stuff you make on training trip with your teammates and your roommates Oh my gosh, I completely forgot. Um, we have movie nights. We would all pile into one hotel room on training trip. This has happened the past two years now. We've kind of made it a tradition. I don't know how we're going to do it with the team being so big next year. But um, we, freshman year, we would all pack into a room and watch scary movies. This past year, we kind of watched like mystery movies. So I don't know. I think we're thinking comedy for next year. But we all would just sit and watch a movie before bed <laughs> okay. and I just remember you know after practice you know in the morning head out to the beach and just you know lay on the beach had the best time with everyone and there were so many other teams there um you know so you really did get to meet a lot of different people and um the new year's day was always whatever 50s on 50 based on the year so you know 85 it was 85 50s on 50 and <laughs> so no, I mean, I just thought training trip was fantastic and, uh, you know, just hanging out on the beach with everyone. Was it the same location every year or did you guys switched up around Florida? We switched it up. One year we went to Orlando. The other two years we were in Fort Lauderdale. And then one year we didn't go to Florida, but we did kind of a, it was a week long trip where we we went out to Maryland because we had quite a few girls on the team from Maryland 
And so we like swam three division one schools actually. So we swam Ohio University on our way out. We swam the University of Maryland and then we swam at Georgetown. And that was actually very cool because we were able obviously to see some of the sites in Washington, DC, um, but it was nice that we were able to swim in the hometown of some of the girls um, that were on the team. So their parents didn't have to travel so far. And, um, you know, it was just pretty cool to swim against some uh, D1 schools. We have been to Florida, but we went to different parts of Florida. Um, I don't remember. I'm terrible with locations. I don't remember what part. I know that they were um kind of near each other, but I think they plan to go to a different part of Florida for next year as well. So they we've been changing it up in Florida a little bit. Very cool. Yeah, we now went to the University of Miami one time when we were down there. So that Ooh. was really cool too. Yeah. That would be fun. Miami is fun, especially for some college students. Exactly. <laughs> Um, now let's talk about academics and Wittenberg in general. Um, so the first thing I'd like to ask everyone is, uh, you know, coming out of high school, I'm sure swimming was a part of your college decision when you were trying to find out where to go. But obviously, you probably had options in Wittenberg. Something made it Wittenberg for you. So, um, Brenda, I'll have you start. When you look back at that time, um, do you, what was it about Wittenberg that made you want to choose them? So a couple of things. One, I was very familiar with Wittenberg because I was raised in the Lutheran Church and it's affiliated with the Lutheran Church. So we always, you know, our youth group always went over for a football game at least once a year. So I was familiar, familiar, familiar with it that way. I think the thing, though, that was kind of the deciding factor is that it was far enough away from home, but not too far away. <laughs> My uh, I mean, I was within 30 minutes of Denison and 45 minutes of Kenyon when I grew up. And I was like, yeah, I am not going that close to home. It was just, I didn't want mom and dad dropping in on me. <laughs> and so I wanted That's to be bad. far enough away that, um, you know, it was convenient for them, but also I had my space. And um, no, it just, the academics were fantastic. Um, I went in thinking that I wanted to go to law school, which I did not do in the end, but um, you know, there are still faculty members that I'm in touch with today. Um, actually, one I just had conversation with last week and, you know, even um, our coach, I'm still in touch with her. So I think it's one of those things where, you know, the relationships that you make are lifetime relationships. And, you know, I love my time at Wittenberg. Yeah, um, I'm kind of very much similar to Brenda. I was familiar with WIT. I actually trained for the Springfield YMCA during my time in high school. That was the club team I swam for, um, which is about a 45-minute drive for me. And a lot of my friends were on that team were from Springfield. And so they kind of were like Brenda, where it was like, oh, it's too close to home. It's too close. And so I was like, oh, yeah, I don't – Windwork's too close, too, whatever. Um and I told my mom she got one pick at school for me to look at. And so she told me to look at wit. I was like, okay, fine, I did. And I met with the professors in my um major and I really liked them. I really liked their um program that they had. And then Winberg also has a bunch of resources to help you succeed academically. Um, just like for the, if you're having managing issues, if you're having um just like any trouble in any classes, the professors and the um, faculty there really will help you succeed in any way that you can, as long as you reach out for that help. Um, and so that I thought was really nice, which was something that they like really expressed on the tour um, when I went there. I thought that was really cool. Um, and I met with this swim coach there and I loved her. And so I was like, this is this is great. I really like the school. And I was I didn't want to go super far from home but I also don't want to go too close. And so exactly the exact same thing. I was like, that's far enough to where like, I know my mother can like bring me something if I need it. I know enough people in the area to where in case I like need an emergency, like I can, I got it. Um, but it also wasn't like close enough to where I know that my mom is just right there. Like I have my own space. <laughs> you get your best grades during the season. I always did. I yeah for some reason I do I don't know why I think it's because I like know that I'm since like swimming and school is so busy I'm like okay you have to do your do it at this time and I think that 
the swim team, we don't have study tables. I don't know. I know some sports do, but we don't have study tables, but we always study together anyways. Even mm-hmm. though like a lot of us are in the same majors, well, we we have a table in the library that we like have basically claimed yeah. and um or like a little section. Yeah. And so we all um anytime we go into the library, there's at least one or two people from our team there. Um, and so that table is occupied all day. And so that's probably why, honestly, it's just because I'm there studying with my teammates and like studying's fun. I'm not just sitting there like bored or stressed. Well, and I think definitely it's the time management during the season. You know, like you said, you have to get stuff done. And and so, yeah. And I always thought it was great, too. I had um, uh, Dr. Flickinger knew that I was a swimmer and he knew when we had morning practice because he would swim, too. And when I, I'd try to have a class with him in the morning and he always brought me a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of my professors um, swims. And so he's like. I I was working on my backstroke and I got like I like shaved off this amount of time or like I figured out if I do this this makes me better and I'm like yeah Dr. D like you're doing great I saw you and then we like I would have a uh, piano lessons right after um he swam and so we'd just be chit-chatting and he's like got my workout and I'm like good job yeah awesome um Addie what is your major right now I am a music education, primary education, double major. My goodness. So very busy with a a sport also happening. Yes, Uh, very busy. And Brenda, when you were in school, what was your major? I was a poli-sci major and I had a minor in economics. Wow. Um, Are you using that? What are you doing these days, if I can ask? I am the chief development officer at the Low Country Food Bank. So I am a fundraiser. But I oversee our fundraising and marketing and communications for the entire organization. And yes, I do use my major. (laughs) Yeah, economics especially, I'm sure. Economics, but it's also, we have to be politically, um, you know, we have to stay very neutral politically. And so when, especially when we're talking to donors, Mm -hmm. um, there are some donors that interject their political beliefs. And so we have to stay neutral in those cases. Yes, yes. Um, when you look back, you mentioned earlier time management. Um, do you think you learned a lot of skills while you were a student athlete in that area that helped you throughout your professional career? Absolutely. Um, again, I think time management is one of them. I also think, you know, what motivates a person, you know, when you can really focus on what your goal is and how that keeps you motivated day in and day out. Um, my days are generally completely different every day. Um, and so keeping the the end goal uh, at, at the forefront is very important for what I do. And in all, all honesty, I hire, I, I would love hiring people who have an athletic background for that same reason. 100% time management is something that you learn. And I have seen in my teammates, um, already from their freshman year to their sophomore year seeing the time management like progress that they've made whereas like freshman year they were struggling to figure out how to like in freshman year you're kind of figuring out a lot of things because you're on your own sometimes for the first time and so it's definitely a learning skill that you're responsible for yourself you're responsible for your homework going to practice paying attention and so that was something that I learned while I was in high school because I was also very busy in high school Um, especially when you're a club swimmer and practice is 45 minutes away, you get out of school, you do your homework and you go to practice and then any homework you didn't get done before then you have to do on the way or after. Um, and so it definitely, um, you learn time management through sports because most athletes that go to D3 schools, they want to do their sport. That's why they're there. Um, but they also are there for school. You're there for a degree of option to learn. And so you don't want to fail at either. So you ta- manage, you learn how to manage your time so you can succeed, succeed at both. Absolutely. And Brenda, I just had my first Charleston, Kiowa Island experience of the low country, beautiful part of the country, very warm, but beautiful. Yeah, it's It's been incredibly warm this week. <laughs> had a couple of power outages I think it's because the load is so great so yeah. I hope it doesn't go off right now but <laughs> yeah <laughs> but 
but beautiful area of the country. Um, it is. I'm very fortunate to live here, and my husband actually played baseball at Wittenberg, so. Oh, cool. Yeah, so he also is a D3 athlete. I love it. Um, now let's get to some story time. So the first one I'll have you both share is your funniest or craziest but appropriate story. And you guys already shared some fun ones, but have it, have you do one more. Um, so Addie, I'll have you start and then Brenda can follow up. Oh, me start. Um, okay. So we have this thing called the Tiger Den, which is a giant um afternoon of just team bonding where we do a bunch of um really silly things. Um and so we um had like you get divided into teams within your team and um I was like there's themes for the teams and so like my team was Chick-fil-A this past year and so I like painted a white shirt uh, with the Chick-fil-A symbol on it and then one of my uh teammates um got like an inflatable cow suit costume thing and so um and then the other one, I think, dressed up as, like, a Chick-fil-A worker or an employee or something. And it was just that, like, dressing up's half, like, half the fun. Um, but, like, part of it was we had to um, paint what this team meant to us. And all the other teams were doing the same thing. And at the end of the, like, challenges and stuff, you, first of all, got to know your teammates very well and have learned how to work together because you have, like, um these like many goals to complete and you have to like talk and like when we were all painting what this team means to us we're like, talking to each other about what we want for this team and this happens at the beginning of the year so we all can kind of go into the um team like knowing each other better and like on the same page um and so it's at the end we see each other's like each team's like little portraits of what this team means to us and it that's really cool to see um and then also we work together and create a team motto for the year, which is also something that I think is really, really awesome that my team does because we use that motto, motto for the entire year and we help keep each other accountable and just push each other because in the end, we all want each other to succeed and support each other. So that was that's probably my favorite thing I look forward to every year at the very beginning of the year is like what the theme's going to be for Tiger Den and just what are we going to end up like doing and just seeing where the team is at the very beginning of the year. That's really cool. Oh, geez. So many memories. I think <laughs> one of the best memories we had though, when um, is the upper Valley mall still there? I don't even know. <laughs> I believe so. Okay. So at Christmas time, you know, back in the day, they would have like video booths where you could go video, like lip sync your own songs. And so the whole team went, um, you know, and because we are the Tigers, I the Tiger was kind of our theme song. And so we did the entire team singing I the Tiger and we gave that to our coach. And then the other one was, uh, what would we, oh, Coach Holly got run over by a reindeer. Yeah, we did that. So we would we would change the l lyrics to a lot of uh, songs as kind of psych up songs. Um, you know, there was the rap song Wild Thing. We did one called <laughs> Whip Thing, the Whip Thing, and oh, I mean, so many songs that we would, but we would always sing those before, like the night before meet, you know, the practice before. So yeah, we did that all the time, or lip syncing on top of the uh, starting blocks to Bon Jovi. <laughs> we did that a lot. So Me no, and Owen lip sync all the time at practice. <laughs> you literally on the wall, me and him are just looking at each other and we're like grooving. I remember we were doing the uh, Melissa Hollenbacher and I were up on the blocks jamming to living on a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. no, I mean, there are just so many great memories of hanging out with, you know, and decorating lockers. Um, you know, the captains would always decorate lockers and stuff before before beats. And so that was fun. One thing we do that kind of like reminded me of like you guys singing those songs the nights before the meets. So we would have team circle where we all like say one thing that we um, are like excited for that we're looking forward to for somebody else. Just kind of like getting ourselves in like that meet mindset. And one of the guys on the team started this trend that we actually ended up getting other schools to do with us at midseason but we would all see still be in our circle but we'd spread out a little bit and he said i'm ready for the 
the meet. Are you ready for the meet? And he would point to somebody and then you have to say it. And then you point to somebody and you'd get through the entire team, but like you would scream it at the top of your lungs. And so then usually when you're the last person, we either like all cheer or at mid season, we all pointed to Hiram and we were like, are you ready for me? And they were all like, I'm ready for the meet. And it like kind of got a little thing going. And so we thought that was really cool because we were able to like hype up other teams along with our team. And so that's something we have done also like at the beginning of every meet. And it's, it's I don't know where he got it from, but it's just something that we love and we scream because why not? <laughs> why not? I remember too at, at nationals, at NCAAs, we would, because again, there were so many schools from Ohio there that we had an Ohio cheer. And so all of the Ohio, it's, I mean, I can't, even, yeah, it was just Ohio, Ohio. And so we would do that uh, every night before the meet started, just because there were so many schools from Ohio. That's crazy. That's awesome. So those were some fun stories. Now just think of your favorite memories. So something that you hold near and dear to you um, as you look back at the time you spent the program and we'll have Brenda start this one. Oh, wow. Again, um, <laughs> such a great time and great people. I think, you know, looking back, I would have to say kind of like, you know, senior day when they were recognizing us and just knowing that that group of seniors had gone through so much together in four years and, you know, knowing the growth that we all experienced together. And again, that we can still just reach out to each other. And um, I know, again, I it goes back to the relationships. I just think that support system, um, not just my senior year, but, you know, girls, year, you know, a couple years ahead of me, below me, um, it is. It's just a great support system. That's kind of very similar to mine. So when I first joined the team, by the end of the season, there was only me and two other girls. Um, and so we grew very, very close by the end of the year. Um, I ended up becoming roommates with one of them my this past sophomore year. And um am now best friends with like the other one separately but all three of us are just like really really close and one of them just graduated and so I think doing all the senior things for her with um my friend who's in the same grade as me I think just me and her doing all the senior things writing all the letters and just she and like we all supported each other and I they just didn't think that much support and a, a teammate could like be that possible I in high school and um with any sports like seeing the seniors go is always so sad and like people would cry but I was never really much of like a crier I was like I don't know if I like just didn't make the bonds that I made or what but I was like like guys they're, they're it's gonna be okay like, you're gonna talk to them again but um when that the senior left specifically I was a hot mess express I couldn't do it and um, I was the only one on the team. A lot of us loved her and the, I've just never been on a team that's been so supportive. And so the memories are definitely like the relationships that you make, the support. We will literally be screaming at our coach like, what's their time? What's their PR? What's their PR? What's their goal? What do they want? Because we want to like cheer with them when they touch that wall and they've dropped time or they got their goal. And um, like her very last race um, was a 200 butterfly and she hadn't dropped in that race and she just wanted to drop like even like a millisecond and she had dropped a second and just me and my friend McKenna like we just start bawling our eyes out the entire team is screaming we're cheering we're going up to her and we're like dude you just did it and she's like I know and there's like a whole video of us just sobbing and hugging and crying and I just think like it's just I've not I didn't think you could love a team as much as I love Wittenberg's team. <laughs> Next time you have any recruits and you need to play in this podcast, because I want to join the program now. <laughs> the way you two both talk about it sounds amazing. Um, so we'll start to wrap up the conversation. I have a couple more questions for you, more about Division Three. Um, as you know, this podcast is part of our 50th anniversary celebration. So this year we're doing 50 podcast episodes 
just talking about, you know, what Division Three has meant to current and former student athletes. So the first question I have for you both is, what does it mean to you to be or to have been a D3 student athlete? Um, and Addie, I'll have you start. To be a D3 student athlete to me is just the ability to do what you love still. Um, D3 allows me to do a to do a double major. Those are both very difficult and time consuming and still allow me to swim and do all the things that I want to do on like any extracurriculars or anything. Um, D3 just allows me to keep doing what I love like manageably and still love it. Um, and so that's why I like D3 and why I chose D3. I, I agree completely. You know, it, it gives you the opportunity to continue in your sport that you love um, to achieve great things, um, but also get an amazing education. Um, and again, I, I just think that, you know, you talked about 1983 uh, being the first year for the, the female um, Division Three athletics. And it was one of those things that, you know, when we got, when I got to college, I didn't really know what to expect. And I think that it's come so far and it makes me so proud to know that I was kind of there at the beginning of it. Um, I remember we used to, uh, we didn't get our own like bags to swim bags to carry all of our equipment. We had used bags from the football team. So <laughs> there are these, you know, like two foot or three foot long bags that we shoved all of our stuff into. And I just think that it's so fantastic that, you know, the women's sports are still growing, but at the same time, I think feel like at least now, you know, it's a priority for schools where I'm not sure that it was when I first started. Definitely. All right, my last question, and we'll go the opposite direction, have Brenda start and Addie close this out. 50 years down, many, many more to come. So when you look at Division Three, what do you see or what do you hope to see for the future of D3? Oh, wow. You know, I... <laughs> It would be, I know there are so many like new sports that are growing. And I think that there are times where I, I hope that the sports continue to be added at all of the schools. Um, you know, I know this, certainly for cost consideration, sometimes sports are, are cut, but I want to make sure, or I hope that D3 schools, Wittenberg, continue to look at how they can grow, um, you know, be more inclusive and certainly make sure that they are supporting all of the student athletes. Yeah, very much very similar thing. I hope that D3, I don't say like I don't want it to change, but I hope that it still is like a good um, option for students to continue to do the sport that they love while still focusing on their school and their academics. Um, I also would like Wittenberg and the sports to grow. Um, as sports are keep getting added, I would love to see sports getting added, sports growing, um, sports becoming um, a safe place for them to meet friends and people and make those relationships. Um, so definitely I would love to see D3 schools maybe um, just become not just a good uh, education while you can do sport, but also work on having like a good team environment within that sport, within that school um just in general because like that's something that I have found out with that I would want everybody to experience that no matter what school they go to a great way to close this out thank you both so much for joining me today I had a great time learning about Wittenberg like I said I'm ready to to try out for the team I <laughs> want to I am impressed by how many different themed things you guys do Addy I feel like you said everything has a theme movie nights car rides music selection um i loved hearing about your experiences at wittenberg so thank you both so much thank you, thank you. to everyone listening thanks for tuning into this episode of small talk we post new episodes every week to follow along with everything division three you can find us on social media at ncaa d3 or ncaa d i i i Make sure to join the conversation with us all year long by using the hashtag DIII50. Have a great day, and we'll see you for some more small talk next week.